Not long ago I made a video in which I explained how to fake motion on your photos using Photoshop to get some cool results like the ones you see in these examples. I got a few messages from people asking me if this photo was also created using the same technique and the answer is it wasn't. The motion blur you see in this photo was created almost entirely in camera and then I used Photoshop in certain parts of the photo to accentuate that motion blur. In this video I'm going to walk you through this photography technique and then I'm quickly going to show you what I did in Photoshop to make the end result look just a little bit better. So for this technique you're going to need some kind of moving subject, obviously you're going to be taking the photo using the camera and you're going to be panning that camera in the direction in which your subject is moving and you're going to try to match the speed with which you pan the camera to the speed with which your subject is moving. So I don't have a camera to actually show you how to do this because I'm recording on the only one that I have, but I have this retro vintage camera thingy here on my desk. So I'm gonna show you how to actually do this. You hold the camera like this, and as the subject is moving in front of you, you just move the camera. Here are three pro tips that you want to take advantage of. Number one is I made the stupid mistake of trying to hold the camera vertically like this and shoot it like this. Don't do that, it's gonna make the process a lot more difficult and you definitely should not be making this process more difficult than it already is. So just hold it horizontally like this and take your photos like so. The second tip is shoot in continuous mode. Uh, I don't know why, but in the beginning I thought it would be cool to just take one photo every single time a car moved. Again, it's going to result in the process taking a lot more time. So use burst mode or continuous mode and just hold down that shutter button and take a bunch of photos. Maybe one of those photos is gonna turn out good. The rest of them are gonna be garbage, but that's not the point. The point is to get at least one good looking shot. And the third tip is to use a wider lens. Uh, honestly, the first time I did this, I used a focal length of about 45 millimeter, I think. And it was very difficult to frame the shot properly and to compose it. Uh, the way that I would have wanted and it was just generally a lot more difficult to get a good looking shot so if you go a little bit wider the background is going to be more interesting uh, everything is going to be just a lot better so definitely use the widest lens that you have at your disposal it's going to make the end result a lot better all right so here are the settings that you're going to want to use in order for this technique to work for your shutter speed i would recommend using something around 130 or 160. Uh, every photo that i took was taken using a shutter speed of 1 30th of a second with the f number you want to go way up i used f16 for all the photos that i took and for your iso you're going to want to do about 100 or 200 it really depends on the lighting conditions outside maybe you need to bring up the iso a little bit to get an even good exposure maybe you don't it really depends on the shot but these are the settings that you're generally going to want to experiment around with okay so right now i'm inside of adobe photoshop and i've already opened up the photo that i'm going to edit Full disclosure, you definitely don't have to do what I'm about to do right now. The photos you're gonna get are already pretty impressive coming out of camera as they are, so I'm not gonna go too crazy on the edit either. All I'm gonna do is apply some motion blur onto certain parts of the photo that are already relatively blurry, and that's going to make the photo look a little bit better in my opinion. All I'm gonna do is duplicate the layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J on my keyboard, and then I'm gonna go up to Filter, Blur, Motion Blur. Here, you want to make sure that the angle matches the angle in which you want the blur to be. In my case, that's going to be around 0 degrees, actually. Um, as for the amount, you need to experiment around with it. For this particular photo, I think a value of about 150 works pretty good. Now we need to apply a layer mask to this layer by clicking on this icon down here. And then we're going to grab a black soft brush, increase the size to a fairly big amount, and paint away the parts of the photo where we don't want the blur to be visible. In this photo, the blur doesn't need to affect the car itself, so I'm going to paint that away, and we're pretty much done at this point. The more time you spend refining the edges of the mask, the better the end result is going to look, but generally speaking, this is all there is to this effect. Alright guys, so that was it for today. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you got something out of it, and if you did, please like this video. It means a lot to me. Also, check out the channel and consider subscribing. I guarantee you will not regret it. And most importantly of all, follow me on Instagram. That's where we can connect the most easily. That's where you can find all of my photos and all of my work. Also, if you have any questions for me, you can drop them on Instagram and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. I'll be back soon with more videos and until then, peace.